Hello Year 7, we are going to have a go at doing some more of our reading fluency practice. Um, so I have got a new text for you today to be having a little look at um, and we are going to have a go at echo reading. So just remember the idea is that I will read and I will say go and then you will try and read it exactly how I have read it. Um, I'll try and leave a little bit of a longer gap this time. I don't think I got my timings quite right last time. Um, so we will figure this out together. So I'm going to read the whole thing to you and then we're going to pick um, part of it to echo read. So get ready to go. All right, so we are looking at a really good story. It's an extract from Roald Dahl's Boy Tales of Childhood. All right, listen carefully. The sweet shop in Clandaff in the year 1923 was the very center of our lives. To us, it was what a bar is to a drunk or a church is to a bishop. Without it, there would have been little to live for but it had one terrible drawback, this sweet shop. The woman who owned it was a horror. We hated her and we had good reason for doing so. Her name was Mrs Pratchett. She was a small skinny old hag with a moustache on her upper lip and a mouth as sour as a green gooseberry. She never smiled. She never welcomed us when we went in, and the only times she spoke were when she said things like, I'm watching you, so keep your thieving fingers off them chocolates. Or, I don't want you in here just to look around. Either you forks out, or you gets out. But by far the most loathsome thing about Mrs Pratchett was the filth that clung around her. Her apron was grey and greasy. Her blouse had bits of breakfast all over it, toast crumbs and tea stains and splotches of dried egg yolk. It was her hands, however, that disturbed us most. They were disgusting. They were black with dirt and grime. They looked as though they'd been putting lumps of coal on the fire all day long. And do not forget, please, that it was these very hands and fingers that she plunged into the sweet jars when we asked for a pennyworth of treacle toffee or wine gums or nut clusters or whatever. There were precious few health laws in those days and nobody, least of all Mrs Pratchett, ever thought of using a little shovel for getting out the sweets as they do today. The mere sight of her grimy right hand with its black fingernails digging an ounce of chocolate fudge out of a jar would have caused a starving tramp to go running from the shop. But not us. Sweets were our lifeblood. We would have put up with far worse than that to get them. So we simply stood and watched in sullen silence while this disgusting old woman stirred around inside the jars with her foul fingers. Mm. I don't think I would be eating any sweets served to me by that lady. I wonder what she looks like in your mind. Remember a key part of the echo reading um, is to be able to visualise what it is that we've read. So there's a really, really clear description of Mrs Pratchett there. Now we're going to have a go at echo reading um, this section, okay? And then I'm going to ask you some questions on it. So I'm going to read, I'll say go, and then you're going to read, and I'm going to try and leave enough time for you to actually do it properly, okay? So let's see how we get on this week. Are you ready? Let's, let's go for it, okay? But by far the most loathsome thing about Mrs Pratchett was the filth that clung around her. Go.
Her apron was grey and greasy. Go. Her blouse had bits of breakfast all over it. Go. Toast crumbs and tea stains and splotches of dried egg yolk. Go. It was her hands, however, that disturbed us most. Go. They were disgusting. Go. They were black with dirt and grime. Go. They looked as though they had been putting lumps of coal on the fire all day long. Go. And do not forget, please, go. That it was these very hands and fingers, go. that she plunged into the sweet jars. Go! When we asked for a pennyworth of treacle toffee or wine gums or nut clusters or whatever. Go! <clears throat> there were precious few health laws in those days. Go! And nobody, least of all Mrs. Pratchett, go. Ever thought of using a little shovel for getting out the sweets, as they do today, go. The mere sight of her grimy right hand, go. with its black fingernails digging an ounce of chocolate fudge out of a jar. Go. Would have caused a starving tramp to go running from the shop. But not us. Go. Sweets were our lifeblood. Go. We would have put up with far worse than that to get them. Go. So we simply stood and watched in sullen silence. Go. While this disgusting old woman stirred around inside the jars with her foul fingers. Go. Okay, hopefully I left enough time for you, that time to be able to read it in between me saying it and then you doing it and then me speaking again. But it is a bit weird trying to do this um, remotely on a computer where I can't hear you. So what I would like you to do now is this. I would like you to pause on this screen so that you can have a go at reading that section as dramatically as you can. Imagine you were performing it to a huge audience and you're trying to be as dramatic and as kind of descriptive with the tone of your voice and the pace at which you read and try and scoop up those sentences that we've just broken down. Because when you read it kind of broken up, it can sound a little bit funny. So you're gonna pause the screen and you're gonna have a go now at reading the whole thing as one kind of very, very dramatic paragraph. So pause it and come back to me in just a moment when you've done that. Okay, how did it go? Did, it, did you enjoy that? Did you feel silly? Who, who did you read to? Did you read to somebody in your home? Did you read to a pet? I don't know. 
right now I'm just reading to the computer and it does feel funny, it does feel a bit silly, but it's really good to practice the pace of our reading, the tone of our voice, the way that we're scooping meanings together and it's really good to get our imagination going. Okay, we are going to have a few comprehension questions, okay, so I'm going to ask you a few questions now um, and you just think about the answer or tell whoever it is that you've been reading to. Um, but let's have a little look. Okay, let's make it work. Here we go. Oh, right, comprehension questions. There we go. So let's look at the first one. Oh, let me try and move myself. I wonder if I can move myself over. Oh, no, no, that's not going to let me move. No, I'll tell you what, we'll just do that. What does personification mean? Okay, okay the clue is in the name. If you look here, we've got the, the word person hidden in there. So what does personification mean? Have a little think. Okay, so personification is where we make something that's not human sound like a human. It's got that word person in there. So let's see then if we can spot the personification at the start of this little extract. Have a little scan. The best way to scan is to run your eyes along the text as quickly as you can in chronological order like this. It doesn't really make sense to just kind of do this with your eyes. Because if you do this with your eyes and kind of scan around all over the place like this, it, it doesn't help you track anything, it doesn't help you catch any information. So start at the top here and scan along and just see, can you see anything that makes something that's not a person sound like a person. Okay, maybe you spotted it, maybe you've not, I'm going to show you where it is just now. Okay, the filth that clung around her, can you see where that is? But by far the most loathsome thing about Mrs. Pratchett was the filth that clung around her. Now, if filth is clinging, in our minds, it gives us the impression that the filth is kind of really gripping onto her as much as it can. So it gives us the impression that the filth that's not human is behaving like a human. It's clinging on to Mrs. Pratchett. Now, why on earth would filth want to cling to Mrs. Pratchett? Hmm. Maybe it's because she's quite filthy and horrible herself. So because of that personification, we can begin to imagine her a little bit more. We can begin to realise that actually she's probably quite a dirty lady. And do we want that dirty lady to be serving us sweets? I don't, personally. Okay, let's look at the next comprehension question. Here we go. What is alliteration? Now, I know that your teachers have taught you this. Um, I know that you know it, but sometimes we have to work a bit hard and we have to file through those things we've got stored in our brain and work out what is alliteration. Hmm. Again, the clue is kind of hidden in the word. We've got a repeated sound within the word, the double L, alliteration. So just like personification, the clue is in the name, personification. But the clue is in the name for alliteration, it's got this double L. So alliteration is a repeated sound, isn't it? Let's have a little look. Do we spot any alliteration? Again, let's practice our scanning. Chronological order, let's start here and scan across. Do we notice any alliteration. So there are a few examples in there actually. Let me let me show you one that I highlighted. 
There we go. We've got her blouse had bits of breakfast. So we've got that repeated B sound. There is another one hanging here, grey and greasy. So we could read the whole thing actually. Her apron was grey and greasy. Her blouse had bits of breakfast. Remember we talked about the sounds that writers use to help the piece of writing feel like it's almost like musical. And it kind of, these devices, alliteration, helps to give a piece of writing that musicality. So we've got, her apron was grey and greasy. Her blouse had bits of breakfast. And it's that alliteration that gives it that kind of musicality. Okay, let's look at one more, I think. I've just done one more. What is sibilance? Again, the clue, guys, is in the name. Sibilance. Okay, it's that repeated S sound. What is sibilance? It's that repeated S sound. So, if we scan through, again from the beginning, it's quite a few S sounds in here. Can you spot any repeated examples of sibilance? Have a little look. Scan through. I'm going to show you what I highlighted. Okay. Her blouse had bits of breakfast all over it. Toast crumbs and tea stains and splotches of dried egg yolk. It was her hands, however, that disturbed us most. So you can really see there in that little bit that I've underlined all of the S sounds. And it has a certain effect in this case. It slows the pace down. And that slow pace really helps us imagine Mrs. Pratchett. And in my mind, that slow kind of draggy S sound makes Mrs. Pratchett seem a little bit more sinister, a little bit more threatening, a little bit more nasty. Can you see any sibilance anywhere else? Let's just scan through. Scanning through, I wonder if you spotted it yet. I'm going to show you where it is. The last little bit, listen to this again. So we simply stood and watched in sullen silence while this disgusting old woman stirred around inside the jars with her foul fingers. Ooh, so horrible. And that S sound, that sibilance, really gives it that quite unnerving, ooh, horrible feel. So that's it, we are pretty much done for today. I hope you have enjoyed that. I hope you can imagine um, that particular character. If you would like to read this book, it's, this is an extract from the book Boy by Roald Dahl, fantastic um, author um, with some really funny illustrations. And speaking of illustrations, I wonder what does Mrs Pratchett look like in your head from that description we have just read? What does she look like in your head? So I would like you to have a go at drawing her and you can email your um, picture to me so you can take a photograph of it and you can email it to me at my school email address so search for me mrs tarleton and send your picture to me um, and then maybe next week when i or after these holidays rather i can put out some of your images um, that you have created on mrs project so that's it for today. If you want to go back and have a go at reading, then you've obviously got this little extract that you can read about Mrs. Pratchett. 
You've got last week's extract that you can read about Scrooge, and we will find some more juicy extracts with amazing um, kind of descriptions um, for after the Easter holidays. So thank you guys, stay safe, and see you soon.